Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, I've got my little papers here so that I know that I'm on my camera. I know that's kind of low-tech, but you know, I'm kind of in a low-tech kind of mood right at this moment. Somebody I know on YouTube emailed me and asked me about how to use a Geiger counter. They bought an inspector, which is about that big, and has a giant wide Geiger-Mueller tube on the back of it. It's much, much more sensitive than my Geiger counter. Anyway, I wanted to try to help them with understanding how their Geiger counter worked. And, um, let's see, where is it? Ah, here it is. Because it's kind of hot right this moment, I don't know why my AC is not working, I also have some jasmine tea. So if you'll forgive me drinking my jasmine tea. My cat's running around, so hopefully it doesn't attack while I'm in the middle of this video. Alright, so you have a Geiger counter. The type of Geiger counter that my friend purchased is an inspector by SC Systems. SC Systems? Anyway, it reads in four different types of modes. It measures microsieverts per hour, millerankens per hour, and it detects and counts per minute and counts per second. Now, let me explain first what that means. When they first took the Geiger counter, like pretend this is the Geiger counter, they placed it by a piece of cesium-137, which is a specific radioactive material. It produces energy at a specific frequ oh, not frequency, but a specific uh, level. It's a certain amount of energy it puts off. And they know that at a certain distance, every tick produces this number of microsieverts, this number of millirems. Basically, they know that for cesium-137, if you get a tick, you, you, you get a certain number of microsieverts or, or millirankins. Basically put the Geiger counter when it's in the microsievert per hour or millirankin per hour mode is only accurate in those numbers when it, is de when it is specifically being exposed to the element that it was calibrated for. Does that make any sense? If I know that you work five hours and I know that you make ten dollars an hour, then I know that your total earnings were fifty bucks. Five times ten, fifty. If all of a sudden you, I, I start looking at some other person who does not make ten dollars an hour, but I know they work for five hours. That math no longer makes sense. I can detect that they worked for five hours, but I can't measure that to be fifty anymore. Maybe they make twenty dollars an hour, in which case it's a hundred. Does, does that kind of make sense? Now, every tick is definitely something radioactive occurring, so it's capable of detecting that. When you're in counts per minute, or counts per second then you are detecting radiation. That is the most likely mode that you want to be in, unless you specifically are calibrated for cesium-137 or whatever you're, you're looking at. And most likely, if you're looking for food contamination or whatever you're doing, you're not going to know exactly what you're looking for. Now, if you're specifically trying to measure, let's say, radioactive iodine, then you want to take your instrument, follow the manual, and calibrate it for iodine. But you probably don't want to do that. That's very advanced. Don't worry about doing that right this moment. Take your Geiger counter, switch it to the on position with the sound, and make sure that it's in counts per minute mode, CPM. You can, for, for this particular Geiger counter, the one that you bought, you can, uh, when you turn it on, you can hold the little plus button down. You check the manual to make sure, hold the plus button down, go to the menu, I think it's menu option 2, and then I believe you can, from then the, from there, you can select counts per minute and uh, uh, millirankins or microsieverts per hour and counts per second. You want counts per minute. Shut it off, shut it back on again after you've saved it. If you hold the middle button down, I think it'll actually just reboot. But anyway, once it turns on, you want to wait for a whole minute. You'll hear a beep. That tells you that it's gotten a nice statistical curvature here going. It knows it's collected enough data to be statistically accurate. More than 40 counts, generally speaking. At that point, 
you'll want to measure counts per minute. Take the device, place it somewhere in your house, and let it sit there undisturbed and count out an hour or two. If you read in the manual, there's a, um, a timed function that allows you to set it to timer. You, you flick the little switch down, read up the time section, tells you how to do it. Set it for two hours and run it, and you'll, you'll get a large number. Divide it by the number of minutes that you, 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 you used it, and you get an average. So if you get 240 counts in two hours, 240 divided by 120 minutes, that's two hours, would equal two counts per minute. Of course, that would be really low. In reality, it would be higher. As a general rule of thumb, anything under 100 counts per minute is considered relatively safe. I wouldn't want something that's 90 counts per minute sitting right beside me, but it's probably not going to hurt you. Now, it's up to you. They always say this, I know. It's up to you to determine what you think is safe. I know many people that think 20,000 counts per minute is safe. I don't. But if you go to many places, there's actually some places in South America, some places in North America that can have as much as 80 and 90 counts per minute as their normal background radiation. If you want to do this test, the multi-hour count, in several places in your house to get a feel for how much radiation is in your house. If you notice that you're getting 20 or 30 counts per minute, that's fine. Now you have an inspector, so you actually will be getting three times the counts per minute as me. Where I would read 20 counts per minute, you will read 60 counts per minute. That's all right, because your Geiger counter is three times bigger than mine. So three times the counts per minute. That's simple, isn't it? Every time radiation passes through the tube, tick. All right. In my Geiger counter, it works like this. 20 counts per minute if it is cesium-137 that I'm measuring is equal to 0 0.20 microsieverts, yeah, microsieverts per hour or 0 0.02 millirankins per hour. Micro, milla. So thousands, millions. So this is roughly equivalent to uh, zero, uh, what is this? Um, two, ten, uh, two ten millionths of a joule of energy per kilogram. That's what that means. That's how much energy it's, it's depositing in you. And of course that energy is proportionate to how, to how much energy cesium 137 or strontium 90 or whatever you're detecting puts off. That's why I said that it's important to probably just use counts for a minute unless you want to get into some serious math. Um, once you have a baseline for an area for the, for the whole house and you have it mapped out, pick an area where you want to test that's relatively low in radiation and run maybe a 24 hour count. Get a really, really, really good baseline. Remember, the sunlight will change your, your, your counts per minute as well as other sources. So 24 hours is a good amount of time. Then you can run a test on your food for four or five hours to determine the difference. And remember, some food naturally produces radiation, such as potassium-containing foods, potatoes and uh, tomatoes and bananas may actually have a slightly higher count, and that's perfectly normal. So let's see if I have any time left on my camera. Nope, I'm almost out of time. Um, I can give you more information after that, but that's a little bit of an intro. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.